Hey, welcome back guys. I've got a couple updates as far as um, a couple videos that I made in the past. One video I showed you how to set up DShot ESCs and then another video, a separate video, I was talking about how to pick the best gyro update frequency and PID loop frequency for your flight controller uh, depending on if you have a F1 board or F3 with I2C or a F3 with SPI or a F4 processor. and included um, how to choose your pay loop frequency based on your ESCs and many other things like that. I will leave links to both of those videos in the description below if you have not watched them yet. Now I normally, when my videos become outdated, I delete them and I redo them because I can't stand there being old outdated videos on YouTube that people watch and then they become more confused because things are much different from when that video was taken. I'm not deleting these two videos because really the only thing that has changed is the configurator and the firmware and it's changed for the better. So this is pretty interesting stuff. So those videos will stay there and there is plenty, just loads of good information. So if you haven't watched those yet, check them out. As far as the video where I talked about DShot ESCs and setting them up, in that video we had the min throttle, middle, max, and min command. We no longer see that anymore. And in that video, I showed you that, uh, well, I took you into the BL Heli Suite and told you that the min throttle and max throttle, the values did not matter. It, does, it didn't matter where you set them to because with the DShot protocol, it's not looking at that. It completely ignores it. So you could literally set them anywhere in the BL Heli Suite and it wouldn't make a difference. And then in Betaflight, I left it the min throttle at the default 1070. Well, actually, I showed you firsthand what happens if you change it. I set it to like 1050, and then I set it to 1100, took it into the motors tab, and showed you that it made zero difference because, like I said, it's ignoring it. I then took you into the CLI and showed you how to change the motor idle percent if you wanted to increase or decrease your motor idle speed. So what has changed is we no longer get the min, middle, and max throttle settings here, and they have included the motor idle percent. So you can easily change it here without having to use the CLI. Now the question I have received is, um, I've actually received this from quite a few people. Uh, guys have said, well JC, you tell us to set the min throttle to 10 1070, and we watched another YouTuber and he tells us to set it to 1000. So which one is correct? Well, whenever Boris B and whoever else, you know, helps him make this firmware and these new configurators, they're pretty smart guys. So whatever we see in the CLI, I would imagine would be correct. So if we type set min and we see min throttle is still at 1070. Uh, so I would imagine they're smart guys. If it were supposed to be at 1000, they would have made it 1000 by default, but the default is 1070. Um, but then again, like I said, it doesn't matter because in that test that I showed you, it, it didn't matter. It didn't make a difference. So now let's move on to uh, the other video that I made. In uh, the video where I showed you how to set the update frequencies at, depending on your flight controller and ESCs, one thing that I said was uh, if you have a F3 board with that uses I2C, then the highest you could go on the gyro update frequency was 4 kilohertz and the PID loop set to 2 kilohertz. And doing that, the CPU load wouldn't be too high, it would be at a usable percentage. And uh, like I said in that video, I, I recommend 35% and below. Some guys will say 25%, some guys will say all the way up to 50. I, I say 35 and I'm going to keep it at 35. Then the flip side to that is if you had an F3 board that uses SPI, the max we could do was 8 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz. But we still couldn't run 8K and 8K on an F3 board, no matter what F3 board it was, because if you do that, as I show you in that video, the CPU load went all the way up to 100%. It was maxed out. Uh, your multi rotor wouldn't arm, it's not going to be able to function. At the time of me recording that video, the only boards that could handle the full 8K and 8K were the F4 processor flight controllers. But what's interesting is, I have a F3 board plugged in right now, and I'm set to 8K and 8K, 
and I'm sitting at 35% on the dot, actually, which I find that even more interesting. But as I said before, I didn't think F3 boards were outdated because even even 8K and 4K, you're probably not even going to be able to notice a difference. Most people don't. Some people say they can. Maybe it's a placebo. Maybe they actually can notice a difference. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter anymore because F3 boards are definitely still not outdated yet. Now that they can run the full 8K and 8K, just like the F4 boards can. Now the F4 boards can go much higher. They can go up to 32K. Uh, well, there actually there's more that goes into it. It depends on the type of gyro you use. Not all gyros can handle 32K, uh, but that's good. That would be a different video in its own. I'll talk about that once we get into the race flight videos. Uh, if they ever decide to finish the Race Flight 1 project, I, God knows I, when they will finish that. I don't know if they will. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I just wanted to uh, give you a little update because I just don't want you guys watching those two videos, if you have already watched them or watching them in the future, uh, to think that, oh, well, this guy don't know what he's talking about because things are different now. But uh, like I always say, this hobby grows so fast, it is so hard for not just me, but you know any YouTuber that's covering this stuff, it is so hard for us to keep up with it. I mean, how, let's just look at the firmware. In the last eight days, we've got 3.1.1, then 0.2, 0.3, and 0.5. Four versions of firmware in eight days. So I hope you do understand. I do apologize, but please understand. It is incredibly hard for us to keep these videos updated and not out of date. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.